Now first let's talk about bloating. Bloating is a result of overeating, excess gas in the stomach and of course period cramps. Most common is when we notice stomach being bigger after a heavy meal, feeling super gassy and then obviously there's the PMS which is a whole different story. Half of our stomach is actually filled with swallowed air and the stomach bloats up from gas produced by the bacteria in the intestines to digest the food that we ate. Of course, the more difficult it is to digest the food, the more gas your stomach will produce. So not only do we want to look better in clothes and not to be mistaken for carrying a child, we also don't want to feel bloated because it's not a good feeling. So here we go. Today I'm going to share with you my seven tips on how to de-bloat. Number one is drink a cup of hot water with lemon every morning when you wake up. Not only is it going to wake you up, it's also going to wake up your stomach. And it's also great to drink it during or after a meal. The lemon contains a ton of vitamin C and due to the sourness, it helps to produce saliva which will aid in the digestion process. Number two is avoid drinking coffee, milk, soy for breakfast. Switch it to almond milk which doesn't actually contain any dairy or yogurt with probiotics and not the ones with a lot of sugar and, and corn syrup and all that stuff. The probiotics in the yogurt is good for bacteria that helps your stomach feel better and digest the food better. Number three is avoid consuming carbonated drinks like sodas, especially when they claim to be diet as those usually contain a ton of sugar. And of course, alcohol is out of the question. It will form gas in your stomach, but it also makes your face bloat. It is known that it has a combination of sugar and toxins in the alcohol that makes your body go a bit cuckoo. So instead, opt for ginger lemongrass tea. The ginger, although it seems spicy, it's actually really a calming herb. It helps relieve gases and reduces intestinal activity. It also thins out the blood to increase blood circulation, so it's also effective in relieving pain. Number four is avoid eating greasy foods, especially fast food, as a combination of high sodium and grease will cause your insides to go a little cuckoo. Having said that, oil itself doesn't really cause you to bloat, it actually keeps you fuller for longer. However, if you do have irritable bowel syndrome and other related illnesses, the grease can actually trigger bloating. Same goes for fast foods or processed food that is high in sodium as salt messes up with the water balance in your body and cause water retention in certain areas, hence making you feel and look bigger than you actually are. Number five is being the most common form of bloating that, that is actually swallowing air itself. It is important to try avoid chewing gum and eat slower. As I've mentioned in how to take care of your stomach video, the process of a digestion starts with chewing the food. If you chew your food longer and slower, you're helping your stomach and your intestines do all the hard work, making it more manageable for it to be broken down and absorbed by the body. Sometimes when you snort your food without actually chewing, you are risking the inflammation of your gastrointestinal tract, which will cause bloating and as your body will do extra work to help combat that. Number six is berries. You got blueberries, strawberries, raspberries. They're all high in water content, which helps flush out all your system. And it's rich in fiber, which can aid in moving the food through the intestines quicker. And it can also relieve constipation, which is one of the biggest cause in mild bloating. Number seven, last but not least, is meditation or sleep. A lot of the times, bloating can be caused by anxiety and stress. And meditation helps with not only blood circulation, but it also helps to clear the mind and you'll find it can also assist in managing your stress and anxiety. Meditating for just 15 to 20 minutes a day will not only calm your mind, your stomach, but also your heart. And of course, you could always take a nap and rest your body. When you're sleeping, your body goes into rejuvenation mode, so it will help you fight against the causes that makes you feel bloated. A lot of times when you overeat, you go into like a food coma and all you want to do is sleep, right? Don't you feel less full and less bloated after waking up from a nap? And of course, I have to mention here that there are some severe cases of bloating where you will need to go seek medical attention to avoid it from getting any worse. Now I'm going to show you some pressure points to help you to bloat. To locate the first pressure point, first find your belly button and then use four fingers, place it above your belly button and then the first pressure point is directly above there. Press down firmly and massage for two to three minutes clockwise and anti-clockwise. You start to feel a little bit of ache and your mouth will start to water, it's a little bit of sour feeling but this one helps to eliminate gas and also helps to deflate your stomach. The second pressure point is only one finger apart, so find your belly button again 
and it's just just one finger above your belly button is the next pressure point. Also press down firmly and massage two to three minutes. This one not only helps to eliminate water retention, but at the same time helps with any stomach ache you might have. Now the last pressure point is directly underneath. So if you find your belly button and use four fingers measure directly underneath your belly button and the pressure point is right there. This one you also need to press down firmly and massage two to three minutes clockwise and anti-clockwise. This one will increase the activity of your intestines and help your body to eliminate fat a lot quicker. So I want to share today some of my tips on how I got rid of my bloating permanently. And these aren't tips that are going to magically work like that. You're going to have to be consistent, you're going to have to put in the time and effort, and you're going to have to have trust in your body's ability to heal. My first tip, and this one has helped me probably more than anything, is food combining. For those of you who don't know what food combining is, I made a chart and I talked about it in my ebook, which will be linked down below if you're interested in checking it out. And this chart shows you kind of the basics of food combining with raw fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. But to go more into depth now and what I talk about a lot in my book is that certain foods digest at faster speeds than other foods. For example, raw fruits digest much faster than cooked food and certain fruits digest faster than other fruits. For example, watermelon digests way faster I think than any other food on the planet because it has such a high water content. So you want to eat watermelon by itself in the morning so that it has room to, to fully digest without running into other things. My best analogy that I've come up with to explain food combining is that your digestive system is like a one lane highway and some foods go 75 miles an hour, some foods go 30 miles an hour, and some foods go like 200 miles an hour. So watermelon is in the fast lane cruising whereas like cashews are chugging up the rear and stuff like potatoes and especially if you're eating animal products, those are going to be moving at like a snail pace compared to like plant foods. So what I recommend is eating raw foods before cooked foods, fruit before fats, uh, greens pretty much go well with everything. They're kind of like a sweeper for your digestive system. They kind of just help move everything through and in my opinion avoiding all animal products but if you do eat animal products make sure to eat them after you're eating your plant foods especially if they're raw plant foods because they will definitely get in the way. Animal products have no fiber in them so they move very slowly. So if you eat like a steak it's going to be going about five miles an hour on the freeway in your intestines. At steakouts people eat like a burger and then they have watermelon for dessert. Watermelon's going to be going like 200 miles an hour so you have watermelon coming in behind a five mile an hour steak and it's just gonna bump 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 into each other and create gas and bloating and discomfort and then it'll ferment and make your gas smell make your breath smell it'll just like sit in there and rot until it finally passes through so I definitely recommend checking out my book for food combining go back to when I showed you the chart and screenshot it and follow that and see if it helps you number two eating a high raw vegan diet has been so so helpful that's what ultimately got rid of all of my digestive issues and all of my bloating problems I honestly now have the best digestion of anybody I know and that's coming from someone who had Crohn's disease who was on dozens of prescription drugs since I was a teenager trying to deal with this thing and now I'm totally all good and I promise the high raw vegan diet 
diet, high in fruits, high in vegetables, especially greens, lower in nuts and seeds, really advocate eating a high raw vegan diet. And this means eating, a, for me, eating a raw breakfast, a mostly or all raw lunch, and a dinner that is, whether it's cooked or raw, is always on a bed of greens. So it's always gonna be high in water content, high in minerals, and high in fiber. High fiber diets are extremely important, and at first, it may make you more bloated, but that's just your body trying to push everything out that's already in there. So you just have to have patience with your body because it will eventually push everything out. And if you eat consistent high fiber foods, you will reduce your bloating, I promise. And like I said at first, it may get worse before it gets better, but you just have to have faith in this one. I also highly recommend eating a whole foods plant-based diet, meaning eating foods that just have one ingredient. So like blueberries or like corn or like chickpeas or greens or banana, like single ingredient foods do really well. Particularly mono meals, which means eating one food until you're completely satisfied, was really helpful in my healing process. So just eating watermelon for breakfast or just eating bananas for lunch or something like that was really, really helpful for me. Number three, having a good morning routine. In order to develop a good morning routine, which was something I never had before, I found this book called The Miracle Morning and it was so helpful and teaching me how to have like a productive, healthy morning. And from there, I was able to adapt what it told me in the book to fit my own needs. And now I feel like I have a really good, solid morning routine and it's helped my bloating a ton because I wake up, I exercise, which is very important to get rid of bloating because it helps move things through you. I drink a ton of water in the morning, like at least 30 ounces of water, if not more. That's also super helpful. Drink lots of water right when you wake up in the morning to get your digestive system going. But another tip is don't drink water while you're eating food because it gets in the way of your digestive enzymes. So there's like a 30 minute period before you eat and a 30 minute to an hour period after you eat where I would recommend trying to not drink water. And if you're finding that your meals are making you really thirsty, that's probably because there's a lot of cooked food or a lot of salt. Number four may seem silly, but it honestly has some, is something that I've recently added into my life and it's been so surprisingly helpful. So from being bloated for so many years, my abdominal muscles are were underused and it actually led to a back injury when I, cause I played soccer in high school and college and I had a back injury at the end of my high school season because my core was so weak that my back was overcompensating for it because I've been bloated, it stretched out my ab muscles. So now when I work out, I really focus and make sure that I'm engaging my core muscles and even just throughout daily activities like bending over and picking something up, I make sure to engage my core muscles. Lifting stuff, I make sure to engage my core muscles to strengthen them because when they're strong and when they're engaged, it helps with your digestion and it helps you have a flat stomach and it helps get rid of bloating. And it's honestly helped me so much having stronger core muscles. It's actually really important. So I highly recommend focusing on this and make sure when you're working out that you're not just like trying to get the workout done. Like if you're doing sit-ups, don't just do anything you can to get the workout done. Actually make sure you're engaging the proper muscles and having proper form. And I think it's super underrated. So that's something I highly recommend focusing on. And last but not least, intermittent fasting. Now don't click out of the video, don't roll your eyes, hear me out for a second. The word fasting is really triggering for people and I have a video on intermittent fasting probably like seven or eight videos back, so check that out. But basically, intermittent fasting, in my opinion, is eating a late breakfast and an early dinner and this is super beneficial. Our stomachs aren't really meant to digest before 11 a.m. So for me, waiting until 11 or 12 to eat my breakfast is amazing and it also helps me have a solid morning routine and it also allows me to get a lot of water in before I eat and really wake my body up before I require any digestion to happen. Eating a late breakfast is really important and I think it's pushed on us to Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I disagree, I think lunch is the most important meal of the day. Our bodies, are, our digestive system is strongest between I think 12 and two. So eating really early can really, like it can shake your body up and your body's like, whoa, what's happening? I gotta wake up, I gotta do this. And it'll, it can lead to a day full of like, uncomfortable digestion and bloating and gas and stuff like that. So eating a late breakfast is really important and an early dinner. I would say definitely finish eating by seven o'clock the latest. I try to eat as early as five and that way my body has like, let me do math really fast. <laughs> uh, that way my, 
that way 12 plus 11 I'm so bad at math that way my body has at least like 12 to 17 hours to rest and fast and give my digestive system a break every single day so it's not constantly working overload you don't want your digestive system just like always having to work it, it drains energy out of you and it'll bloat you and this is why I also recommend eating three big meals a day as opposed to like five smaller snacky meals because then your body doesn't always have to be digesting and if you're eating fewer meals then you're probably eating fewer ingredients so it's gonna be easier for your body to digest don't overeat it's harmful for your digestive system your stomach can only hold so much comfortably and that's a sign that hey we don't need any more like we're good for now and you're not going to destroy your metabolism by eating until you're satisfied I promise when I overeat that's the only time I really get bloated now I really make sure to stop when I'm satisfied and this is obviously an ongoing learning thing don't get frustrated with yourself we all overeat occasionally we all under eat occasionally just do the best that you can and try to really listen to those hunger signs. So those are my five slash six tips on how to get rid of bloating, and I hope this was really helpful for you.